Um, well, there's a lot to talk about, my friends. Alfred Montaner here again. Uh, guys, uh, as you may have known, we recently had a tragic at this point accident where one person was killed on a boating accident here out of Blackpool Marina. Um, we didn't catch the, um, the boat leaving in the morning because we were doing some other projects. And um, then they called us and they said, hey, there's something in interesting or crazy going down at the marina. You might want to stop by. So Daniel came back, filmed from over here. I came and filmed from the other side with my phone. And, uh, and what we witnessed was crazy. Um, it was absolutely crazy, guys. And, and let me first off uh, start off by saying, we have amazing first responders in the city of, well, in the county of Miami-Dade. And I was, I was blown away by, by first of all, the army of people that came just for that accident. Um, and it, it, you know, it makes you, look, look, speaking, speaking of them, like speaking of them, this is this is like clockwork. It's like I just got them on the radio and said, "Hey, cue cue the rib boat, police boat on seven, please, guys. These these officers were were involved in the rescue. It was a long day for those guys. I mean, them and many more, right? But yes, absolutely crazy day." I'm going to tell you a little a couple things that, that I heard. Oh no, we got Barcero music. Damn it. Why Barcero music so early, dude? We just got here. Um, so, uh, we got some boats coming out too. All right. Um, so, what essentially. What I've gathered as far as information, right? The information that I've gathered is that the boat that was in the accident, there's, there's, there's multiple things going on here. And, and take this as speculation because I'm not 100% sure, okay? Um, but, oh, I saw these guys at the gas station. Oh, this is gonna be good later. I saw this guy at the gas station. He almost ripped off the pole. He almost ripped off the pole. Uh, while he was pouring gas. He didn't notice that, but I did. I was like, damn, my phone. All right, so essentially, it seems, and, and I remember I have to, because I don't know the facts, but I hear a lot of facts, or what I, I believe are facts. The boat was going at a high rate of speed, and in the process of uh, going in at a high rate of speed, all right, hold on a second. Let me get this boat here. Oh, she's got the selfie game on. What's up, guys? Wait, what size is that contender? 39. Bro, what are your thoughts on what happened? Yeah, man, that's crazy. What are you, what are you, what are your thoughts? What do you think? Huh? Why? Why do you think it happened? Too much power. These boats aren't designed for 4450s in the back. There it is. Um, that boat is the same model or same size. I was probably a little different. It's the same hole that was in the accident as of recent. And, and the difference is that it had, the other one had four engines, four 450 engines, which I think max rated, like I said, and I could be wrong about that. I think max was four 400s that they could put. And it's, it, I mean, I don't know, I haven't read a statement or anything from Contender, but, um, Guys, what happens is people start tinkering with boats after they leave the manufacturing plants, and then eventually it becomes, I mean, like a zombie boat. You know, people do this and do that, and you know, the, the way that it was designed to do and, and operate has been changed. Um, 
so so what we're hearing right is this is what's what's a word on the street okay is the boat was going at a high rate of speed one scenario one scenario is that the boat shut off and in the process of shutting off the motors hooked which created a violent turn to one side on the boat the boat's t-top hit water flipped over multiple times which explains why the t-top which to me explains why the t-top would be flat and then obviously more than likely ejected the people who were involved at the time um let's see over here these guys are back already wait what's going on here why are they back so fast all right guys um <laughs> the organized uh product placement is over no no i don't know they i i guys i did not tell them to do that um okay so that's one scenario and then you know i was thinking at the time because of where the area they were at and being on the water in this you kind of thought it was a show but it, it wasn't not where they were so and obviously another theory could be that operator error so now there was not any other boats involved there was nothing in the water that was hit it was essentially um, really really fast speed speaking of fast speed that that 39 contender um, which is the boat that they were on is rated for quad and don't don't fact check me on this but uh, but it's rated for quad 400s max it was repowered with quad 450s and those 450s um, are obviously extremely fast motors now some people were telling me that obviously it's so much power that the bow of the boat can dig creating instability which make, gives the boat a little bit more of like a chine walk um, and this is all speculative. I'm this, at this point, I'm just talking about what I've talked to people and it can make the boat kind of lose control. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at um, with, with, with that. And, and once we know the, the, the story, right, the whole story. Um, now, after, after listening to the there's a guy named Transit Joe that did um, a video of the actual people at the marina here and the Miami-Dade police and rescue. He was, he was actually playing it, what was being said on the radio, on their radio, on their emergency radio. So interesting to hear all that. Um, it seems like the first responders already knew that there was a possible drowning slash or death at the time. Um, and that's why North and South aerial helicopters, rescue helicopters were called. And uh, we had both helicopters here at Black Point Marina, two of them. Um, we had two, two of those, we had FWC Park Service I mean, you name it, guys. Everybody was here. Um, even Ocean Reef wanted to come help. Look at Captain Lance. Captain! Hey, did you respond to that boating accident the other day? We might get some info here, guys. Hold, hold on, hold on a second, because you know what? Um, couple, couple guys there. To Tobo US was there. I don't think it was this particular boat, but but maybe maybe Captain Nassau. Guys, and we're all we're all trying to find out here what happened, right? Because we don't want to be in a scenario where something happens 
Oh boy. So, um, and everybody's wondering what the hell happened. I don't want that to happen to me. So the community is really trying to find out. So maybe Captain Lance here from Towboat US. What's going on? So, I saw that there was a red towboat, U.S. boat, at the scene of the accident the other day. Oh, yeah, the contender. Yes. Yeah, so uh, what they did is, I mean, the guy had insurance and everything, but uh, since, you know, somebody accident with injuries, so yeah. the guy, uh, FWC, they pay the bill. FW pays the bill at that point? Yeah. Because so they have to investigate. They have, like, this stuff. Yeah. On the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, Cito. Okay, so we filmed Cito bringing the boat back. I don't know if you were able to see that video. Yeah. Okay. You guys were one of the first boats on the scene? Yeah, Cito was also there. They're, they're also there. Yeah. So everybody was dispatched. I, what I'm talking about right now on camera, we're all trying to figure out what the hell happened. Oh, so you haven't heard what happened, so. Okay. Speak up just a little bit. Okay. So it was the owner, the guy who was looking to buy the boat, and then he got a friend to come with him. His friend, like, had, a, I think, a 31 concept, so he knew, like, a lot about boats. The, so the guy who wanted to buy the boat. Wanted to buy the boat. I brought a friend. He got his friend to come with him. Okay. So his friend was running the boat. Okay. And, uh, apparently, uh, they said, like, they lost their electronics, and, um, uh, then when they lost their electronics, the engines went hard over and they were doing like 80 miles per hour. So the engines went hard over and the boat completely rolled on its side at 80 miles an hour. Well, it would have had to roll multiple times at that point because did you see the T-top was flat? It was literally flattened. Uh, um, yeah, the, the police actually, I mean, they, they witnessed it. They had somebody pulled over right there. Oh. They witnessed it happen. Oh. It's probably a good thing they were there, otherwise they probably all three would have been dead, you know? Wow, crazy stuff. So yeah, the guy that, that, that uh, passed away was the guy... Driving? Yeah, which was uh, the guy who was looking to buy it, his friend that came with. His friend was looking to buy it, not the guy driving? Yeah, not the guy driving. He was like there helping his friend. Yeah. Uh, crazy stuff, dude. Yeah. Incredible, crazy stuff. Um, has anything ho else happened a lot the last couple of days after... A lot of people are talking about that, and, and we're all trying to get answers. That's why, you know. Yeah, to be honest, man, this week's been, well, this weekend's been slow. Saturday. Football, dude. The, the Dolphins are winning. Wait until they start losing. We'll be back. It's nice <laughs> out, too. <laughs> Captain Lance, guys. Hey, Tobo USA, thank you guys for keeping us safe out on the water, man. Hey, especially when there's, there's problems, right? Yeah. Guys. Hey, take care, Captain Lance, guys. Um, giving us information. Now while we film here all right so i obviously i had daniel here filming very very rough footage to watch and i chose not to put it or publish it it's just not gonna see the internet um well i can edit it to to the point where i feel comfortable if i wanted to do that i can i can right but it's just really rough to watch there was a there's a company that went out there um, that we film them here all the time, right here, out of this ramp. And it's uh, a company that makes catamarans out here and it's called Triple H or HHH. And they were on the boat. Um, they, they, were, they were out there at the time. When I saw aerial footage of uh, of uh what's this place called uh, of channel seven news that boat was there and i asked them when i was filming on the rocks hey do you know what happened because i see i already seen them on the news not like you see a catamaran at the moment they didn't acknowledge anything they said no 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 whatever so i already saw them on there i wasn't gonna press them but then I later saw that that company, the people on, the, on that boat, were the people who first got to the three victims. Um, and this is all speculation, right? This is, this is all speculation. But they were the, the closest people to them. 
So there's, there's, there's things that are being said that they were the first ones to go on scene. They put the people on their boat and try to do the rescue and then they called in police and then police got there. So I don't believe that information that was just said right now, and, and nothing against Captain Lance, right? That the police witnessed that. I don't think that that was the case, but it could be, who, who knows? It could have been at a distance, but the first boat from what I'm hearing they got to them was that Triple H catamaran. And then they found two people in the water and then they couldn't find the third person and then they ended up looking for the third person, found them and then tried to do chest compressions and get the person alive, uh, come back to life. I do not know. Okay, so we, we do also know that because on Instagram, the person had listed that boat for sale. The boat was for sale, I think for just over half a million dollars. If, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, and then, obviously, they did a sea trial and you know, now we know what happened. As far as who knows who within the boat, I don't know that yet. I, w I would love to speak to the, to the owner of the boat who was trying to sell the boat to see if maybe the person driving, if it was his friend or if it was the friend of the person that was trying to buy the boat. Um, so, so this is still ongoing. I can't wait for this investigation to, to lead to other things and see exactly what was the initial cause. And, and I think why I'm bringing aware to, awareness to it mostly, right? Is let's just say, and, I, and guys, I've been ejected off of a boat, okay? I've been ejected off of my boat, so I can tell you, I've been in a scenario that I lost power and my boat hooked and I flew. And so did my brother, and one of my other brothers stayed on the boat because uh, his weight uh, pushed on the console and he ripped up the whole console. It's a bigger guy, but the momentum and the vi how violent it was, I flew like maybe, I would say maybe from here halfway to, to, to the docks, like maybe 20 yards, 25 yards. So I, now the difference is I had a lanyard on. Right? So when you have your lanyard on, it'll kill the power uh, of the boat. My power went off, but it, it's almost like it glitched. I got thrown off. I have my lanyard on. Would I have needed my lanyard because the power went off? I don't know, me personally. But I do know that that's what, what made my engine just hook. Anything! All right, so, so once I got thrown off, my brother stayed on the boat. Um, he couldn't get to us right away because he didn't have a lanyard to restart the boat because the lanyard was on my leg. And um, I swam back to the boat Saw my brother, asked him if he was okay. My other brother was in the water asking me if I was okay. We were both, both like, what the hell just happened? And then thankfully, wait for it. Oh, what's up? Come here, guys, come to the back. Those are my nephews, dude. Look at that. Speaking of. No, you gotta come around. Come, come, I wanna talk to you guys. Guys, those are my nephews. Actually, it, he, their dad was one of the ones that was on the boat, right? And um, and it was it was absolutely crazy. Um, and then I, I said to myself that day, I said, "What what could have made this better for me?" And I said, "Obviously, having a PFD, because my concern more than anything was hitting hitting something like I have." On that particular boat, I have a, like a little arch in the back. If I would have hit that arch, I probably really would have hurt myself really, really, really bad. Because that's where I think that most of the, the, the damage happens when you hit somebody. No, esos son los muchachos, esos son los sobrinos míos. 
Vienen a visitarme ahora. No, no, no. So, so yes, guys. Um, it's it's obviously a lot of information. Um, I also I've heard other information as well, but like like if I can't verify something completely, I try to just write try not to talk about it, right? But I think what we're all trying to find out is what happened. How can we prevent it from happening? What can you guys do? Like in that case, luckily there was people that were in the area that were, were able to help. So huge, right? But imagine that happens to you in the middle of the night, you know, or you're coming back from somewhere. If you don't have your lanyard on or you don't have no PFDs on, you're not even going to have a shot. So give yourself a shot, right? Even at, even at, at worst, let's just say a possible worst scenario. You have your life vest on, you get, you, I mean, you hit something within the boat, there's no surviving that, but at least you're gonna have your PFD on that you're gonna float somewhere somebody's gonna find you. You're not just gonna disappear into the ocean. So, which, which could happen. So that's kind of like where that's at right now. Um, pray for the family of, of this boater. I mean, the news was reporting that it, his name was Michael Garcia and he had two kids and a wife. Um, I don't know the ages of the kids, but from what I was hearing, one older, one younger. And uh, it's just sad, you know what I'm saying? It's sad to see that. And anything I, I find out along the way, and I, I, th I think more than anything, just you know, put your thoughts and prayers to help alleviate some of the, the pain, right? You know, the, I mean, it's tough when you just, you know, one day from one day to the next, your life just completely transforms. So, and, and guys, I'll tell you this. Listen, um, if there's anything I learned from my accidents, all my crazy accidents in life, is that it gets to a point that it's not you. It's not about you anymore. Um, and you got to kind of start thinking about those that care about you, the ones that are, who are actually going to be by your side when you're all effed up. And because. Uh, Trust me when I tell you, when you're in a hospital for a whole month and your friends just forget because their life moves on and you know, you only have your nucleus or your core every single day there trying to make sure you're better, you realize quickly in life that nothing else matters other than your immediate nucleus, right? So I know this is a, like a somber video, guys, but I think it was something that would needed to be talked about. Um, and yeah, that's... Uh, let me go ahead and talk to my nephews. I cannot get to the flag, guys. I can't get to the flag. There's high tide, king tide. So, I'm from Mountain making a scene as always. I'm gonna put the flag in. A hey, big, big shout out to Towboat US and uh, Sea Tow for for doing what they did in the accident too. You know, Miami Dade responders, rescue, FWC, everybody did a fantastic job. So, I'm from Mountain. I am out of here. Boom.